Good morning everyone and welcome back to Craft Eccentricity. I hope everyone has a wonderful crafting day today and I'm here with a KS Craft new dies and project share. So first of all I found my ruler and I'm going to go in with the stamps. The first item that I received was a bear holding lots and lots of hearts and it comes with a die various sentiments there be my berry sweet valentine you are berry sweet and to a very special either friends girlfriend boyfriend lady wife husband etc friends like you make life bearable so that means it doesn't have to be for valentine's day it can be for friendship and even for birthday but it's really really cute and i haven't used it yet but i will measure that little bear for you and it measures three inches let me do him on the reverse where i can see him by one and a quarter inches so that is the stamp set the words back to front now but you can see the bear and you can see my camera <laughs> so that's that one my second set of stamps is a typewriter set of stamps that is a typewriter keyboard there with the shift key and you also get lots of different sentiments like you make me smile you make the world a better place and wishing you the best day ever so those are really nice sentiments i'll kind of linger there so that you can see them so that's another stamp set that i received and another stamp that i received is this lovely gingham pattern now i received two of these and i believe one will give the positive and the other will give the negative so that you can stamp two colors together so I'll be able to find out if that works when I come back with more projects from KS Craft next week. Sorry, I've got the name upside down. Um, so as you can see, I, I'm pretty sure that when those two go together, the negative and positive there will give you a two shade gingham or plaid, however you like to say it. So I will measure one because they both measure exactly the same. And that is five and a half inches by, let me go in there, by four inches. So it's a full size card size, which is great. And then the next stamp that I received is a huge gingham. There it is. Get it the right way around. Almost dog toothy in style with those little striped bits in between. And that measures six inches by six inches so you're pretty much guaranteed to cover the whole surface of your card base with that or just use bits and pieces you know I sometimes like to hold a big stamp and just do little bits around the edge of a tag but that's a fabulous size so I'm going to be using that one as well next week and the next one that I received is a peacock and the peacock cuts let me see if it cuts out no I don't think that that is a cutting edge which means you can cut your panel into a, a strip of card so that you can then fold it and create your own card to whatever size you want it to be so that's good it's got a cutting edge here and a cutting edge here but no cutting edge there you've got a cutting edge around the edge there so that means that you can create a long strip of card pop your die down and then fold it and you will have a peacock and the length of that one is because the tail is longer than the edge piece there is five and a half inches and then do the tail by four and three quarter inches so that's a great size next up is a little typewriter and i just showed you those little type stamps that will go with this and this is a perfect size for a card or for making the tag 
and I'll do the typewriter dimensions because the little sheet of paper there will lay on top of this section when made. So that is, get your ruler the right way around. <laughs> that is two and three quarter inches. And then at its widest point, two and three quarter inches. But that's really sweet. And then I've got this gorgeous set of bows, which have got that, let's see if we can get a close up, that lovely dot and stitch and slightly scallop edge there. It's really pretty. And a couple of little hearts and a tie to pop into the center and of course as you know I love bows so I'm going to measure the back piece because that is the full size when made up and that is three and a half inches by one and a half inches so that will be the size of that layering bow I mean you'll cut the back piece and then you'll layer up the three pieces and then you'll hold it together with your fastener and then you've even got two little hearts that you can layer up into the middle. My next one rather excited me because I do love mushrooms. <laughs> and this is a mushroom house. Isn't it lovely? It's got the lovely dotty roof. I can't wait to do this one. And then you've got the little wooden style door. And you've got a door frame so that you can layer it up beautifully. And the length of this one is four inches and then at its widest point is three and a half inches so that's a little fairy mushroom house and then next up I received Easter I received a set of three Easter tags and each one of these is different in height because of the ears but the tag base for you is let me get in there Ooh is I would say cut line to cut line it's a fraction over two and a quarter inches and then I'm going to measure the highest point of one for you and that is just under four and a half inches so those are the bunny tags and of course you've got the pieces to put the pink bits into the ears which is really really sweet and then I received another bunny tag. This one is the large one. This one I think would be great on a card with your Easter sentiment stamped there. And once again, you've got the bits of ears that you can layer up. And the length of that one for you is four and a quarter inches. And at its highest ear, three and three quarter inches. And then I received a money envelope. So it's going to be one of those I think I need to make up to give you full dimensions. But I will measure within the, um, the little tucking tab there that it's going to be five and a half inches by three and a half inches. I won't count the tab because that will tuck under. So five and a half by three and a half when fully made up for you. And inside there it says happy birthday. My next set of dies is a set of two planner dies. These have got the scrolling edges and you've got the cherry blossom. And I've also got the smaller one with the scrolling edges and more cherry blossom and a little label there. And as I was saying yesterday, these planner dies are so elaborate that they're perfect for making mini albums. And they're also great for making cards because you can just trim the whole section off there where all those holes are. And you can start to create a really, really lovely card. So the full size of this planner die is seven and whoops that's not correct seven and a quarter inches by five and a quarter inches and then if I turn it over to do the small one that one is let's get that correct it's just a little touch over five inches 
and then to its scrolling point to there, four and a quarter inches. So these holes do line up. So both of these could be put together. It's just that these two holes would cover these two holes so that you've got like a smaller page on top of your larger page. Or if you've got a smaller planner, then it will be a full size page. But that's absolutely gorgeous. And as you know, I am um, building a planner and I'm getting so many planner dies now that I'm going to build myself something that's going to hold all those pages. And that is something that I hope to be able to show you within the next couple of weeks because it's going to be rather a large and decorative item and I'm going to be making it out of wood. So I will come back and show you that because I will permanently be storing my planner pages there. And my next one is this gorgeous loopy edge and you get a balustrade and you get a loopy panel and you get an inside piece. Let's get a close up because see that's got a little wavy edge. Isn't that lovely? You get two of those and then you get that, the balustrade and then you've got you and me and our story. So I will measure the length of that one which is, let's get that in there, eight and a quarter inches. And then we're going five and a half inches. But that's really, really pretty. I shake that down and try to get it squared up in its wrapper. You can see all the pieces there. It's just really, really lovely. So that is that one. And if I spread these over to there, so we've got a little bit more space. Now, I didn't put my flowers back in the bag, but my flowers um, come with the welly boot, and the welly boot comes with lots of different pieces, so that you've got two designs that you can put on this little rain boot. And you've also got the frame section so you can turn it into a shaker rain boot. And I'm going to measure this one fully made because I've made it. And it also comes with these lovely spring flowers. Isn't that pretty? Tulips and daisies, I think they are. So all of this is one set. It's just me. I've been naughty and I didn't put it back. And I'll show you what I made. So... There is my welly boot. I use the KS Craft Love You frame and I use two of the inner sections of that die set. And if this is something you like, I will link to that below. Let's see if we can get a close up. Let's do our usual zoom in and zoom out. There we are. <laughs> it works. Yes. You just have to turn it into a microscope for a few seconds. And I filled the boot up there with the colours of flowers that would match my stripy paper that I got from Tuesday morning. And the solid cardstock is from Joanne. But I think that's so sweet. I mean, the I Love You um, was released by KS Craft for Valentine's, but you can absolutely use it for birthday. I just think that's really lovely. And my husband said to me, he said, are you thinking about Swiss cheese? And I said, well, maybe. But then that might be because I've just designed a set of um, dyes for mice and Swiss cheese is involved. So I probably did have Swiss cheese on the brain. But you get that lovely little buckle there. And I just think it's so sweet. So I'm going to measure the boot and it measures three inches from top to bottom. And then across its sole there is two inches. But I just think it's absolutely gorgeous. So that's my first sample. My second sample, me being naughty again, and everything is in pieces. And this is a large typewriter. And it's a planner page typewriter. And this is the back section of that. I am going to measure it fully made up for you. And as you can see, look, I haven't cleaned it out yet because I got so excited when I was making it. <laughs> so that's me. So you get your turny handle and you get your 
uh, I don't know what this is called, the mechanism for the type uh, type letters. Is it called the type bar? I think it is. And then you get your keys and then you get your, I don't know what that is either. It holds the paper so your paper's not flopping around all over the place. And this is your shift return bar. And then you get a piece that will cut out a piece of paper for you to pop into the typewriter. But I decided not to use this because <laughs> I'm naughty and I just wanted to do my own thing, which is what I did. And this is my planner page. So I used that stamp that I showed you, that typewriter stamp, and I stamped out each of those and cut them separately and placed them behind the back section there and if I can get in close I don't know if you can see that my keys are shiny because they're all coated with glossy accents I was trying to be as authentic as possible and here's the holes here that it becomes part of your planner so it would be lying that way around inside of your planner and there is the paper holding bar and this is what I did differently this would cut out and go on to um, the back panel. Actually, let me get it the right way around. It would go like that. But I decided to try and be a bit more authentic and make it look as if the paper was coming up around the paper roll. And I took my craft knife and I cut all the way across and then threaded my paper through and up and then glued it into position. And here I've just put April showers, bring lots of flowers because this is going to be an April page in my planner. And then the usual, how we used to practice at school, the quick brown fox. And then I just did the alphabet there along the bottom. But once I had done that and completed it, I just put some black cardstock on the back to finish it nicely and I can add a picture or more notes onto the back of it so that is what I have for you today and I will be back tomorrow with a project share from MX Art and some very cheap and rather cute um, storage for your sequins and beads from Dollar Tree so if you're interested in keeping those kinds of things tidy make sure you tune in tomorrow you have a wonderful day as usual all links below. Bye.